Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me working on my car. It's the second part of the Detroit Speed Engineering tune drop lowering kit along with the springer locations. And go figure, I got problems with it. Stay tuned. These things. These things suck ass. Reason why they suck ass? Because the hole in the frame is 1.568, yeah, 1 inch, 568 thousandths of an inch in diameter, and the bushings are 1, one inch and 580 some odd thousandths of an inch. Uh, yeah, there was no way that was going to make up. It would end up being 2, 2.4 thousand, yeah, 2.4 thousandths of an inch. 24 thousandths? 24 ten thousandths of an inch. Uh, interference to get these to fit in here. I got a better part of six hours of getting them in there. Um, there's a couple videos on the interwebs that show, I'm not gonna mention people's names, but it's like, hey, we're gonna install these bushings. And then next thing you know, hey, they're installed. Don't mention how they installed them, but they did get installed. What I ended up doing was um, I took a, took a cylinder brake honing tool, reamed the inside out of here on the frame itself. And clean all the paint up, clean all that stuff off on the inside there, made it nice and smooth because maybe I thought when they welded that tubing in on the, the frame rail that came from Taiwan, uh, maybe they, they actually, you know, warped the inside of the tube itself. And it was, there was some warpage to it. I mean, I mean I'm not going to lie, that wasn't like the main problem, but the main problems were the bushing themselves. They were just too freaking big for the hole. Um, sometimes that's not a problem for some things, but it's a problem for this. Uh, for you guys who have leaves, it would be easy fix. Super simple. Um, chuck it in a leaf, take a few thousands off, and it'll pop right in. But you still want that interference fit. Um, what I ended up doing was I have an East, Eastwoods uh, SCT, the surface conditioning tool. Pop the drum off, slid on the bushings, uh, very haphazardly taped them in place, and took some 80 grit sandpaper and just sanded them down to they fit. Which led to me other problems. Oh. Luckily, my GTO, many, many, many moons ago, I replaced the bushings in the back of it and had a bunch of all thread like this and was able to draw the bushings in so far. But when it got really tight, I ended up having to, uh, I had some quarter inch plate around, uh, making these washers to go up against the, the, the bushings in the frame rail. And this is where the threatening part comes in. Um, if, you, if you guys on Facebook follow the GMT 800 threaten, with threatening R's, the, this is actually a, I could post this in there because it'd be funny, because this is actually a body mount bolt for a GMT 800 truck. And I had some nuts lying around that fit that M14 1.75 pitch and was able to draw it in. Yeah, six hours worth of sanding, grinding, um, the bushings getting cocked in there, making a tool to pull that out. So yeah, oh, yeah, that's done at least, and it is the way it should be. All right, let me get my big butt up underneath of there and take off the spring pockets. I need to fix one of the holes on one of the sides, and uh, I'm gonna order new ones too, but for the time being, I'm just gonna weld the hole up. Stay tuned for that one. All right, this is the uh, driver's side uh, spring pocket. They got something in the car. Not lovely. Don't ask me what they did there, because I have no idea. So what I'm gonna do is just grind this real quick, put some copper on the back, and then um, weld it up and then grind it smooth. Then after we get done that, um, yeah, this is already done. Uh, I was actually gonna just show this in the last video, you know, grinding and cutting off the spring pockets on that, but ah, I haven't let this thought the videos be too long. So yep, this will be coming up in a uh, few moments. <laughs> I managed to drag this thing out without much fanfare, which is kind of nice. 
having on the uh, uh, car dollies that I got from a buddy of mine a few years ago. Had it resting on there. I was able to wheel it around, bring it back out. And uh, I got some new, actually I had to get a new grinder. And uh, let's try new stripping disc out beforehand. And that works pretty well. While we're over here, this is what not to do with brake lines. This is horrible. This is bad. Does it work? Does it function? Does it get the job done? Yes. But really, fuel line, hose fuel line for insulation clamp for insulation to protect it from vibrating on the axle. Uh, the, the clips that I've been over. I mean, this is what it should look like. You know, I already bent the clips open real quick. Um, yeah, this is all gonna get replaced. I might go just get a roll of stainless and uh, make my own just because I can. So yeah, uh, need to get this thing flipped over. Put a drip pan underneath of it and uh, see how I'm going to cut this off. I got uh, a couple of hard wheels or a cutting disc for my grinder and I also got some blades for a reciprocating saw. I uh, wish I had a plasma, wish I had a cutting torch, would make things a lot easier, but I don't. And uh, to be honest with you, I don't kind of like, you know, when I'm grinding stuff, I really don't care for it sparks too much in the garage. I can only imagine if I had a torch, that'd be kind of fun. All right, uh, get the camera set up, go find my reciprocating saw and uh, let's get the cut cutting this thing up. about 45 minutes later it looks fairly decent for what it is um, I really should have taken it outside and hit with the pressure washer beforehand uh, I may still do it we'll see how I feel later today but yeah so uh, this side that's too clean up for the best is gonna get uh, next side I'll do that off camera because literally verbatim so I cut that off real quick and uh, then actually it'll be once that's cut off cleaned up uh, the next thing will be to uh, Drop the car and uh, get some leaf springs underneath of it. So there's the old spring pocket or spring mount that was on the axle. Uh, yeah, poor little thing. Did this job for 50 years. I'm not gonna go cut it all. The only weird thing is the hole right in the middle there, gave it a plug weld. I started with a uh, quarter inch bit, went up to a half inch bit, chopped it off, or at least drilled it out as far as down as I can get to it, and beat the thing off the hammer. So yeah, just can go uh, right where 90% of the rest of the freaking car went. <laughs> so cool. Um, yeah, put this back down on the ground, take it off the rotisserie, and uh, see if we can't get some uh, leaf springs underneath of it that are in the box back there. Um, I guess whoever's watching this, and if you're somewhere in Delaware or southeastern Pennsylvania, Maryland, Jersey, in that area, um, what a free set of springs. They were made in 2015. I think they're just a set of stock replacements you can get from. I don't know, Tyson Industries, National Parts Depot, wherever the previous owner got them from. Um, don't know what the spring rate is. It's just RL12 written on it. Um, come pick them up. Or I can meet you somewhere off the 95 from Maryland to basically Philadelphia. They're yours. Come pick up the freight. So, time lapse, car down. Then uh, figure out how to mount this thing. Yeah, it's always fun doing stuff by yourself.
me do a little explaining here, Lucy. Uh, I'm keeping this this part of the rotisserie on the front of the car for a couple things. One, wait, uh, it, it, the car is going to need it for when I uh, could get the rear put the rear axle in. Second of all, when I go put the rear axle in and I keep the front this uh, the front part of the rotisserie on, uh, well, that means this extra bit of space here, I can roll the car back, chalk the wheels up, I put the subframe in all that stuff and have that in the front of the car so that way I can work on the front end sheet metal and get that all squared away that means I can put the engine in put the trains in give that you know some weight to the car and then start doing like the body gaps and all the, the gap yeah the gaps on the body you know when we're looking down the side like right where the mirror is there you know where I, I clamped it then a little bit fill it all that fun stuff that's what I go that far I might actually start working on like the turbo system let's see I don't know how, how I'm gonna feel once I actually get back down on four wheels and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to take a little bit of a break. You ever read the instructions once? Make sure I know what the hell I'm doing before I go uh, put stuff underneath the car, get the lights out, and all that good stuff. So yeah, next thing to be coming up will be, I don't know, stay tuned. So, took some time, figured out how everything went. Let's start with this. This is the completed assembly, how it goes in the car itself. Um, it's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory, but let's check this out. Check how the springs are actually sent from Detroit Speed. That's like freaking perfect. I, I love the use of the foam and all that stuff. I'm gonna feel bad for scraping the shit out of them when I go put in the car. Oh well. Um, not to mention the amount of rubber to probably get over, uh, over, yeah, the amount of rubber is gonna get sprayed on them with all the burnouts. But yeah, here's the uh, exploded view of it. Um, these are the frame bushings. They don't meet in the middle. They're spaced out a little bit. I guess that's the way it is. Don't know until we go in the car. Until I go put it in the car and figure it out. But what's neat about it, there's two different ones, and inside, outside, whatever. Uh, doesn't really show on instructions, but that, then again, I didn't go that far. But what's neat is they give this little fitting that you can squirt grease up in there. And it'll fill the cavity up with grease. But anyways, this is how it looks. You got the uh, outside washer that goes up against the, the drop bracket or the offset bracket nylon washer then it goes to the, the frame bushing and then the inner sleeve the out nylon outer sleeve or actually it feels like Delrin. yeah it's Delrin. then uh another inner bushing for the frame nylon washer then the outer stuff bolt through through bolt and all that and same thing with below these are the actual axle mounts that go on the axle hold everything down all that fun stuff and uh these are the lower shock plates that actually mount you know hold the shocks up and go underneath and these are U-bolts. I don't like take them out of the box. But to give you an idea, that's how it should look like when it's all said and done on the car. <laughs> Alright, you guys just got done watching me uh, cut off the spring pockets and uh, clean up the axle tubes a little bit to make them smooth like the instructions say. It's fun, isn't it? Um, so yeah, what I'm thinking about doing next is taking the other spring pocket out, putting the leaf spring in, and then, uh, yeah, and then put the back, back stuff in. Um, should be easy enough. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Is yeah. All right. Um, time lapse it. Okay. Time to put these rear brackets in. Uh, already got the bushings and nylon stuff inserted inside the frame rail. Um, big thing is on the outer. You got these nylon bushings. They go up on the side here. One there, one there. Cool, everything fits. Uh, let me slide around here so I can actually get to it. And I'm not tightening the stuff down. I'm just gonna leave it loose because uh, I'm not planning plan on driving it. Uh, one thing I did do was oh, I'm old. is tape up the brackets, and uh, that way I don't get messed up. Oh, for one thing the instructions say. It took me a few minutes. I had to go in online and reread the instructions a few times. There's two different bushings that go into the frame rail itself. There's a thin one and a thick one. The thin one goes towards the outside of the car, and the thick one goes towards the inside. Reason for that is because uh, we're trying to move the springs over. You put the thick one on the outside, the, frame, the springs can be like that. Then also on the front of the spring, um, I might get around to it. I'll show the... Uh, 
port, the, the, the front of the spring, there is an aluminum spacer on there that pushes the spring over too. So yeah, um, also too, on this bushing here, there's a grease fitting, or actually a grease port, it's not really a fitting, I think you have a little adapter to go in your grease gun to shove in there. Uh, that They want that facing forward, like you release something for it, because if you have the brackets on there like this, you, and it's coming straight down, you won't be able to get to it. So that's, yeah, that's something that's not entirely clear, but it's, once you figure it out, it makes sense. So, yeah, um, looks like the long side goes towards the top and the bolt comes in from the outside. Yeah, long side towards the top. Because that way it clears the framework. So on the, on the uh, spring itself, this is the uh, nylon bushing, and then, then they have a steel center core in it. And that gets slid in here. And then it goes along with two, the plastic, or Delrin, I keep calling them nylon, but they're Delrin, Delrin washers. And you go like that. considering that wasn't too bad um, so that's what it looks like when it's installed there we go um, so that's what an offset shackle bracket looks like and that's aluminum bushing I was talking about on the front of the car there also where it goes towards the uh, uh, outside of the car and the other thing is notice the bolt there the, the nut the head of the bolt for the uh, spring pocket goes towards the inside of the car to give you clearance so these guys I'm just going to put them in there. They get located in here. And you got a little bit of wiggle room. The center, four and a half. I mean, I guess about three sixteenths of an inch. Uh, then I'm going to roll the axle underneath of it and pick it up one side at a time. Let's see if I can do that. Eh, I mean, I could probably get the axle or get the floor jack. Jack up into place and then do it that way too. Well, yeah. I'll just Yet again, put it on time lapse, see what I come up with. So you guys just saw me roughly center the axle. Uh, what I did was, there we go, drop, uh, eyeballed it to the center of the wheel. And it's real, really, really rough measurement here. Um, what I did was center, eyeball it to the center of the axle, measure it from the plumb bob, bob in, and then the same thing on the other side. But once I get the front suspension on, then I can actually measure the wheelbase and set it that way. And I, I can do an X pattern and a few other things to actually get the center properly. Uh, yeah, so like most things, you know, you modify one thing, you gotta modify something else. Take a look at that guy. So the brake tab, the outer brake tab needs to come off. Um, then the clamp can go over top of it. Uh, grab my grinder, my uh, safety laces, and then uh, grind those tabs off real quick. And then uh, let's do that off camera. And uh, cause it only take me a few minutes. Yep. All right, so that's cleaned off. Uh, go figure. Now, stupid, stupid little clip be in the way. So yeah, he's uh, got the, the, the base plate on there. 
top plate, and then uh, nuts and washers. Fortunately, I'm one of those guys that has a hard time using gloves, putting nuts and bolts in. So they say to drop it from the top of the washer, bottom up, now lock nut, another washer. I'm sure it's going to fight me because that's the way today's going. Alright, I gave the bolts a quick gugga dugga too on the spring pockets or spring mounts purchase. I also gave it a very, very rough um, angle on the pinion. Uh, I, what I did was I zeroed it out on the, the car itself and now the pinion set to 2.4 degrees down. Uh, this pinion angle will get set once the transmission and engine's all in there. I just want to give it something now so I know it's kind of kind of half-assed in the location other than just, you know, like I said, just something to have it in there for now. All right, next thing comes up is the uh, the U-bolts and the lower, spray, lower leaf spring. Uh, mounts. All right, so we got a few bolts aside, a bunch of washers, a bunch of nuts. So there's a left and right plate. This is for the dri uh, driver's side because it faces the back of the car like this. So this, uh, the shock lower mount goes towards the inside of the car. So do this side and then uh, I'll do the other side off camera and then uh, when we come back this will be sort of located and then we'll uh, put the shocks up in. audio is working that's the reason why you guys saw the time lapse of me putting the shocks in but they're back out uh yeah i didn't realize when i was recording last night that the uh camera was not recording info or recording audio it seems to be a problem with this thing you know uh, i'm gonna have to go get just like pony up and get myself a dslr another one anyways uh so yeah took this guy out cleaned it up and we put another screw in there to get that type against the body and then uh get the bubbles in and also, while uh, I was off camera, the rear axle is now center in the car. It was only actually off 930 seconds of an inch too far this way. So bumped it over, torqued these down to 40 foot pounds, down to 30 foot pounds. I'm not welding it or anything like that. Just gonna let it you know, ride for as it is. Cause like I said, I'm not driving a car. I just needed to hold some weight on it. So that's centered now, hopefully. We'll see what it looks like when the uh, wheels go on it. But yeah, coming up next is, uh, Holding this cross member on. Um, let me get my uh, gear on and put you guys on a quick time lapse, and then uh, after that, put the shocks back in. Trust me on this one. At least uh, when the car goes back on the rotisserie for uh, when I go to do the paint the bottom, I can fix a lot of that stuff. I mean, it's hot, heavy, exactly what it needed to be. All right, next thing coming up, putting shocks back in. Uh, yeah, um, and then I'm gonna ta actually tape them up too. That way they don't get uh, destroyed. So after that, I'll just do that off the camera real quick. It, they're stupid easy to fit in there. And there's something I just wanted to point out of how I knew previously something will clear. 
All right, let's see you guys up underneath here. Let's screw up one thing. Oops, bolt length size. It's supposed to be two and a half inch, and I got three inch ones. Oops, um, that's what it looks like in. And I, yet again, my crappy welding job. Like I said, when a car goes back on rotisserie, I need to grind that. I'm gonna make a gusset that goes up on the backside there, tie that in a little stronger. And there's a couple of uh, holes up in there where I still need to weld, but like I said, I'll do that on rotisserie. What I do to do the final uh, cleaning up on the bottom here. So yeah, uh, next thing coming up is going to be, uh, let's put the wheels on. I'll put the wheels on and then uh, that'll be the end of this video. After I put the wheels on. Holy crap, wheels on the car? <gasps> How dare you? Um, yeah, um, cool. Um, so, interesting thing with the wheels that are on here. Um, well actually, I know exactly what kind of car they're from because I used to be a real big third gen guy. I had three of them. I had a 88 convertible Camaro that ran 1150s on a small block. Then I had an 89 IROC that I, let's not talk about it. And then a 90 RS that I had for a few years. Let's not talk about that one either. But anyways, these particular wheels I bought off a guy locally for a hundred bucks. Uh, they're shit condition, shit tires on them. Perfect, exactly what I need it for. But anyway, What's interesting about them, they're off a one year only car. And if you know your third gens, uh, drop a comment below and uh, let me know where the, what, the, what year they're from and what car they're from. Uh, another interesting thing is I did a measurement for front to rear on the east side and the axle sitting there quarter inch off. Uh, got a two inches on this side and it's three quarter on the other side space in the front. Oh my God, it's not a big deal. There's so much adjustment on this thing uh, between the lease spring purchase and the um, the pads themselves underneath then even on the front there where the mounts are uh you can move it four and a half to a good quarter inch and same thing with the other side so it's literally gonna be an eighth inch back yeah an eighth inch forward on this side and an eighth inch back on the other side will bring it aligned with the body well it's just okay but i'm not going to align it for the body i'm going to go align it with other points like the wheelbase when the front end goes on the control arms you measure the wheelbase from the center of the ball joint itself back and then I mean, you'll set, I'll set the wheelbase that way because that's more of an absolute than me you know, trying to align the rear axle to a body that was literally cut apart, put together on four jack stands in a garage. So accuracy of that, I don't think it's too much. And hey, there's Willow. So yeah, uh, cool. Like I said, drop below a comment on what your third gen and what particular car that came off of, these came off of. Uh, next thing to be coming up will be, I'll be dropping the car down, rolling it back, putting the front subframe on, and then probably dropping the motor and trans in to give the car some weight. And then I think we're going to be building some of those wooden blocks to bring the car higher up in the air. Because like I said, I'm a big dude. I'm 6'4". I like things higher up in the air because it's a little easier for me. All right, for all you have to do people who found me on uh, YouTube through the suggested, uh, yeah, for the series of suggested videos and stuff. Uh, like I said, go back, take a look at the other stuff. Uh, a lot of cool info. One of my favorite things I've done to the car were the uh, inner rocker supports and made those braces in there. Um, saw some guys on the first gen group, first gen crowd Camaros and Firebirds building those inner rocker braces. I thought it was a pretty good idea for this. And then I actually made it do an X brace in the back instead of the uh, rear firewall and carbon fiber piece you can buy off of Amazon just to cover that up to meet the uh, NHR requirements if I do put a battery back there. Um, yeah, so yeah, thanks for liking, subscribing, sharing, uh, commenting, and all that stuff. Till the next video.